Hey, I've got some bone, boneless uh, pork ribs or country ribs and a couple pork steaks. I'm going to put this rub on and then we're going to get them in the smoker. You don't need a binder or anything on this. Just uh, coat them liberally here. I'm going to coat, coat them on all sides. I'm not a fan of barbecue sauce on my ribs. I like a dry rub. So that is what we're going to do here. And even though this is called a rub, I'm not a fan of rubbing it in. Just get them coated good on all the sides. And the extra that ends up in the bottom, you can just dab it around and pick that up on the ends. All right, I'm going to use my Weber kettle today on this for these uh, boneless ribs and pork <coughs> it. And right now it's a little hot, but it's going to come down. It's about 325 right now. And all I'm going to put on here is two small pieces of apple wood. I've got some other pork steaks that are going to go on here a little later. Um, but my wife doesn't like smoked food. Kind of tough on her because I have six smokers. We are going to do this indirect here, and these pork steaks actually won't take as long as the ribs. So I am going to put the pork steaks kind of back here in the back. And I'm going to kind of arrange these boneless ribs around here so they've got a little bit of room to breathe. This is my first time doing boneless ribs. I uh, usually use St. Louis cut ribs, but these were like $5 for the pack of these at Kroger the other day, so we grabbed them. So we're going to get these kind of arranged on here. All right, what I'm going to do is give that apple wood just a second to kind of get that one piece fired up just a little bit here. And yeah, it's starting to flame up down here on the bottom. All right, that's going to be hot enough. So I'm going to go ahead and put the lid on here. There it goes. I've got my bottom vent set at about a quarter open. And then the uh, top damper up here, I've got it about a quarter open, maybe a little more. Turn that down just a little bit. And I've got my uh, upper damper over the meat opposite the fire, and that'll allow that smoke to come across um, to the across the meat. If you put your damper above your meat, 
um, it'll pull that smoke across. But if you've got your damper on the other side of, uh, above your fire, all your smoke's basically going to go out through your damper and very little of it's going to go across the meat. So I guess if you wanted a little less smoke flavor on there, uh, you could do that. So I've got these on here. I'm going to check them here in 45 minutes or so and see how they're doing. And we'll be back. All right, let's take a look at the pork steak and these country ribs here. They've been going for about an hour and a half, actually. And they are looking pretty good here. I don't know for sure how long these are going to take. I'll have to check the temperature on them here shortly. We're going to get them moved over a bit here because I've got some more pork steak to get on here. I think these will be okay. I'm going to keep these a little closer to the fire. The main heat is here. See if I get some more pork steak on here. It's gonna be tight. This can be a little tricky. Something a little different because these other ones need to cook a little faster here than this. So let's get these more over the coals. There we go. Usually when I do this much meat, I use my uh, offset reverse flow I've got. It's got a little more room than this, so I'm having to kind of work it a little differently here. Let's go for a little bit here and then we'll uh, flip those back over and see what we've got. <coughs> Alright, just about ready to take everything off here. Uh, just going to do a quick shot because everybody's about ready to eat. Uh, let the smoke clear for a second here and see what we got. We've got uh, our ribs, we've got some smoked pork steak, we've got barbecued pork steak, and then we've just got some regular pork steak. My son doesn't like barbecue sauce on his at all. Let's see what we've got here. <laughs> 